hundreds of dollars, which is, I mean, it's not too shabby. Bullet is underway. Here we go. Yep. Mind's I got to get my tickets to Paris. Um, it's going to be a fun event. I, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, it's short but sweet. You know, it's going to be an action-packed couple of days um, as the final four uh, men standing in the SCC uh, will move to France's capital um, to see the Eiffel Tower and hopefully also win the SCC. For now, yeah. France is not one of those places that has changed their capital to somewhere extremely obscure. It's still yeah, Paris. Like Leon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was. I had to double check that in my mind. I'm like, wait. <laughs> yeah, because you you sometimes, especially in the U.S. and the states, it's like a capital of random state is God knows where. Yeah, but Nevada is like Reno. No, Las Vegas. No, Carson City. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the few with the with the word city in the capital. How's that for some trivia for the audience? Really, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, probably the only other one. Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City. You you start racking them up. There's quite a few. Sacramento City <laughs> <laughs> and uh, New York, not New York City. No, not New York City. Uh, no, we have Albany. That's our Albany, the center of civilization. Yes. Uh, yeah, you can play that game in your head while we commentate the bullet. I mean, we need our material to prepare for this bullet segment. Uh, That's right. Magnus just firing moves off. Slightly worse, slightly worse. The pawn play is a bit frozen here, and the queen side could be a liability in the long run, but. A3 probably, yeah, 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 he had to play. Oh, yeah, I mean, a completely game-changing, match-changing move like A3 was worth pointing out with the blue arrow. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I did think about A3. I thought maybe he has to, but now Magnus is just a pawn up. I mean, it's unbelievable. Like, just... Yeah, yeah I mean, one plus one. I think he likes the increment in bullet. Yeah, but for guys like Magnus and Hikaru, it, it, it's... It doesn't quite matter, but they spend their time really effectively later on, I feel like, in the games. I mean, 1-0 is the last 20% of a bullet game that's 1 plus 0, and you know this. It, it's How do you even make good moves with the mouse that fast? Like, how do you do it? Because you're like a top 3, top 5, 1-0 player in the world. I mean, I appreciate it. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's just a lot of it is practice. I mean, bullet is a pretty mercurial skill. If you don't play for a couple months, it, it does start to disappear in atrophy. Not so much, I think, with Blitz. Um, you know, Blitz, you can you can reduce for a while and you're still, you've still got the skills with Bullet. I mean, having that form is really important. Um, and I think there's this idea going around that Magnus is somehow not good or like not fast in all out scrambles. That's absolutely not true. He's not as fast as like Andy Woodward, but he's still incredibly accurate. Uh, especially with increment scrambles. I mean, look at what he's doing here. Queen d5? He's playing this f5? Basically okay. perfectly. Oh, amazing. And now queen d5, and it defends everything. But uh, there's bishop c4 at the end, and maybe it's... No. Oh, what? That's a free bishop. It's probably yeah. mouse slip. No, no, it's not a mouse slip. I, no, no, he just blundered it, I think. Like, I think he just Friend. thought bishop e2, and he takes on d5, and he just totally forgot. Ugh, now it's an 11-point lead. Yeah, and I think now officially we can probably call it, but you know, previous game is uh, so. So Andy Woodward, yeah, he's the new kid on the block and a monster in online. I mean, all of these kids are like I can hang with them when it's you know in terms of just the speed of general play, but when it gets down to like a rook and three versus rook and three time scramble, just, you might as well resign. There, there's just nothing you can do. Wow. Um, they will pre-move sixty moves and then take all of your pieces when you try to, you know, to make a dirty move. I just don't understand it. And uh, Faustino as well. You've played him in Bullet and Blitz? Faustino and Bullet, I played only 1 plus 0. Blitz, he, he dodges me. Um, in 1 plus 0, he is actually very impressive. And, and you can tell, because you cannot, you know, 1 plus 0 really reveals talent. And, and Faustino is super sharp. Um, I will say, I think... People need to tone down the articles like when he beats Magnus in one individual bullet brawl game. Like you don't need to write an article when he gets out of bed in the morning. But he is really impressive. Like you, the talent just shines through very, very quickly. Yeah, I apologize. I, I, I definitely made a video about that. But in my defense, I did not make a video about the recent <laughs> wins against Hikaru. You know, just and it, it's it's like a catch twenty two. You know, at a certain point, I go, I think I'm over covering Faustino. Then I get comments like, Why have you not covered Faustino? And I'm like, Well, I. Right, no, but I get it. I mean, he is he is impressive, and he is one of the t the most promising juniors right now. Is that's a fact? Um, but the journey to the to the very top is 
and um, is difficult. If I may, <laughs> the word junior doesn't even describe it. He's a kid. <laughs> like, junior, tod- tod- more like toddler. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he is 10. Right, like it, junior is under twenty. That's that's it, the, the the definition in, in the chess world. Where it be, that's when you can play the j- junior championships up to twenty years old. <laughs> he's he's ten, man. He's so young. It's crazy, and he's uh, he is very yeah, that's sharp. Actually, mind blowing. Uh, I was eighteen hundred and I was ten. I mean, I I played my first World Youth, and you know, I, I he streams. I mean, he streams and live commentates the games, and he's super mature. And and the under and the maturity on and off the board, like on the board, he plays like an adult, right? Positional decisions, it's just crazy. You can't actually believe your own eyes. Yeah, it's not so his rating and that that's a nice idea by Magnus giving up the bishop. But it's the, the, this 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 game. Uh, if he goes full Hikaru mode, he can bleed a bunch of time off the clock. But we discussed this yesterday. This ethical dilemma. Uh, if you bleed time off the clock here for like ten minutes, are you a terrible person? Or, are, oh, there we go. And right on cue, Magnus agrees to a draw, and he is not a terrible person. <laughs> he, just, he just wants to play another game. That's right. <laughs> I mean, there's the middle ground between, uh, I think ch- some chess fans have to realize, between like Mother Teresa and, I don't know, the Joker. So it's like... <laughs> hey, you some know, people think the Joker is a hero. That's right. I was trying to avoid mentioning a real-life villain, because I'm like... <laughs> right, right, right. So after what I said earlier, I'm like self-censoring, <laughs> but yeah. That's, I don't, nobody knows what happened earlier. Come on. We'll just. No, 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 no. I mean, even I don't know. Yeah. I, so, yeah. I like the timing just as I, I was very scared when I queued up that statement. Like I was, I was thinking, is Magnus going to burn like seven minutes off the clock here up 10 games, but. Right. Like, immediately, it's like when it's age yeah. three, right? And you're like, he's yes. not going to play age three. Eh. Yes. And uh, no, Magnus just wants to play some chess for the love of the game. He's obviously, I mean, he's won the match. It's, uh, but uh, you still have to play out the clock. And ECA six is nice, nice move. I like it. But Bishop D four is a pawn. Yeah, actually, I like the way Minus playing this game. Whoa! All right, my entire screen just went fuzzy. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. My screen on on my end looks like I dove underwater and opened my eyes. You know, you know that feeling. <laughs> Yet, yeah, I do. That's that's what it looks like right now. So if you can still hear me, great. Uh, but uh, I can hear you just fine. Uh, yeah, I mean you're amazing. Your camera is coming through. I think Magnus's internet paid you a visit. Yeah, we got the internet bug. I don't know. I don't know what's There's happening here, but uh, and for... Magnus is winning. Yeah, for yeah, for reasons yeah, I can see that. For reasons I can't quite explain, the bishops are just totally dominating and Yeah, it's amazing. It really is it, it, it's very cool to see because I think we get used to him just showing up to Title Tuesdays and playing absurd openings and doing whatever he wants and losing and when he's locked in, I mean, it's just it's amazing. Oh. Wow. I mean, Min never really got off the second rank. And yep. it's just so frustrating. Um, you lose game after game. I mean, at some point, it just it just becomes a chain reaction. Like, you just, you know, you just stop believing that you can pull off a single half point. This is what I said in the beginning of the match. Bishop F5. We have an exchange Slav. Now, this looks really boring and symmetrical, but there's cool ways to play mm-hmm. it for a win for white. Uh, he's not, he's not quite doing it, but every opening now, there are ideas to make it aggressive and play for a win every single opening. Yeah. And a lot of openings have, have undergone this, this transformation where traditionally they were always thought of as ways to, to kill the game, to, to play for a draw, like the exchange Slav London system. Um, now not so much. I mean, the exchange Slav is being played for an advantage because people have realized there's absolutely no advantage elsewhere. Yeah, so you might, why not that? Exactly. Well, symmetrical structure, symmetrical pieces, but white has a little bit more space. And uh, now black C makes a committal decision. Now C5 is weak. Now white is first to strike on the queen side. So maybe knight coming to C4, which is the one thing that black has, is not that great. B4 is hanging, but I don't think you can take because AB5 is probably quite strong as well as queen B3 and yeah. all sorts of other things. So. 
if you could furtively reposition the rook on c8, then knight knight c4 would work. Now Min is starting to fall apart here. Takes, takes, and wow, Magnus just playing this like it's classical chess. He's playing perfect games in bullet. The knight from c6 can't really move because of queen e8 with a fork. Knight to b7 is threatened. Knight to a everything is, is collapsing. Again, look at that knight on a8. It's just a pathetic piece. 54 seconds for Carlsen. And uh, it's just a well-oiled machine at this point. Yeah, he's having fun. I, I obviously, as the match goes on, you know, you you've had these marathon matches where you you might win by a big margin, but generally, if you're going to play two to three hours in the evening in, in bullet, you know, it's got to be somewhat close, like two to one or something. But at a certain point, you just you realize I don't have it right now, and in this format, you don't have a choice. You just play until the internet dies or until. You know, the match is over on the timer. Yeah, the fact that you're an underdog doesn't doesn't make it less painful. It's it's always painful to lose a match like this uh, as a GM. And but there's obviously no shame in, in losing to Magnus by any score. Uh, and anybody who doesn't realize that, I mean, just isn't in touch with chess because this is the norm for Magnus rather than the exception. Um he is the goat for a reason. Oh my god. Um, and he wins another one, just merciless. Knight F eight, knight G six. And this, not only is he winning games, but the speed with which he's winning them is also increasing. Now F5. He's played every opening. I don't think... Has he repeated mm -hmm. an opening twice? That's honestly been one of the keys to his success, I think, because he's harnessing his one of his biggest strengths, which is his universal knowledge of various openings. He's kept Min guessing. And the moment he even felt a, a whiff that Min um, could steer the game into comfortable territory, he completely switched up the opening approach. Yeah, just incredible. I... It's very, it's very fun too because you get different structures. He he had a Dutch structure earlier, but he played a Stonewall. Now he's playing the Leningrad. But should we rename it the Saint Petersburg? Like Saint Petersburg? Yeah, I, I mean, it... you know the the Saint Petersburg airport's airport code is still LED. Oh, that's. That's fascinating. Yeah, I, no, I didn't know that. I, I mean, but but airport codes are strange, no? Like, why is uh, Toronto YYZ? Is there some deep reason? Or LA, X, or Los Angeles, Los Angeles International? Yeah, I mean, you, you get anxiety going to LAX. It's the top five worst airport in America. But, you know, seriously. Uh, Trust me, Charlotte wants to have a word with you. <laughs> Charlotte has gotten a lot worse. It, it, yeah, it, it used to not be bad, but now, you know, it used to be New York. We had the title, but uh, our airports are beautiful now, so. Well, people found out Charlotte's not a, you know, backwater outpost and suddenly, and it, you know, it's a mid-sized airport for a, a, a growing city. So, yeah, I mean, oh, it's, it is just anxious. Even stepping foot in the airport, you're just filled with anxiety. Yeah, but it'll 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 get better. As a person who lived their whole life with the three worst airports in the country, Newark, <laughs> I mean, Newark is horrendous still <laughs> newark is my, my my least favorite airport i've never seen a big airport like that with the food options alone are just shameful yeah they close at 8 p.m too i had an evening flight once and there was no food so san francisco is nice yeah i haven't been to san francisco i said no one ever by the way but uh maybe the airport <laughs> uh, but uh with Bishop E6, and uh, we should probably commentate the game and not just talk about airports. Oh, Minlay slightly better. Could he be headed for his first win in the bullet? I'm afraid to say anything. <laughs> Bishop C6. Yeah, Charles de Gaulle is, um, I'll be experiencing that fa fairly soon. Oh, Rook F7 and B6. As the blue arrow shows, that pawn sneaks through to b7. Is it's it, a protected passer. Is it He's so got a bad? shot here. Is it so bad? The king is coming to c7 if the rook moves. Apparently that was wrong, by the way. You had to wait to do something. I don't know what it was. And yeah, now you can't move. White can't move the rook because the king gets to c7. In fact, black can even probably play d5 in some position later on. <laughs> or or there. That's Later um, on has arrived. Maybe, maybe he, oh, bishop d5, rook d8, rook e1. Did he miss that? Oh, that was not the idea. The idea is to go here. Okay, cool. 
And king e6 to protect the f5 pawn. And, this should be holdable for black. And another part of the, the toolbox here is knowing when the end game is a draw. He goes to this end game down a pawn, but he knows that by cutting off the king now on like the third rank or something, it's and h4 is probably a draw in many positions as well. This is yeah. unwinnable a for great example. A great example of the gap between you know, increment and non-increment chess. Um, you go into an endgame like this with no increment, you know you're going to win. You know that it's going to take your opponent a certain amount of time to, to defend it as Magnus holds the draw here. In increment play, you can be pretty confident that unless you make a terrible blunder, um, you're, going, you're going to hold this indefinitely. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, in 1-0, you go to that endgame, you give a bunch of meaningless checks, the person flags. That doesn't happen here. So, but it's it's part of the um, it's part of the experience. A four. I feel like every couple of years they keep coming up with new moves in this position. First yeah. it was queen a four, then they go in knight a three, and now there's pawn a four. Yes, pawn a four. Knight c three is odd. I mean, it's not odd, but generally you wait for dc so you can play knight a three. But I guess yeah, the, Magnus loves these positions, and I think recently he's gotten, which is crazy to say, but he's gotten more experience and better at these positions. He's added these <laughs> yeah. kind of pawn gambit lines to his toolbox. Now he's not even down upon, but he had some nice wins, for example, against Mamidyarov, where he gave Mamidyarov c4, let him play b5, and then he he won. Oh, apparently there was a trick there. Knight c2 and knight b6. I'm going to show this really quickly. Yes. I mean, just again, to give you a sense of the kind of, kinds of stuff that Magnus, when he misses stuff, it's at this level of difficulty, knight c2, and now knight b6. This is actually the key move, because if you play knight takes d4, you give up two pieces for rook and you lose. Um, knight b6 forces the queen away. Black simply picks up the pawn on d4 with a winning position. Okay, they've made 60 moves from that moment on. And let me fast forward. That is there an example of something Minlay should see. I mean, but but down 13 games, you you stop seeing stuff. I mean, you... You, mm -hmm. you stop looking for stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You stop looking for stuff. Yeah, like... You boot up a meaningless bullet game, you know, on the toilet or something, you're looking for knight c2, knight b6. Like, it's just, you know, you, you still believe you're going to win the game. And here, he's just happy to play for seven more minutes, and that'll be that. Yeah. Anything but a wonderful time when you're facing Magnus. Now, the plan here is that once this match ends, we'll do the interview. We have another match today, so the action isn't over. In fact, um, I would... Uh, hazard a guess that this nepo Noterback match is going to be just as close, if not closer, than the Arjun uh, Duda match, because these are two players who, you hear their names and you're like, they're evenly matched. No question about it. Oh, Rook D8. Rook D8, yeah. And Rook, Rook F7. F7. Rook F7. Oh, yeah, Rook, Rook F7. D7. Rook D7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I get your bishop first. Yeah, but I'm Magnus Carlsen. Yeah, and then Rook G7, and it's just mate, actually. I mean, after that. And you could lose in the endgame, you can lose now. Uh, I, I am excited to have commentated a Magnus and a Hikaru match, but I almost wish I commentated Dude Arjun, because I would not know who wins the match until the last two games. And also, you know, Nepo Noderbeck, I think, will be very close. So, I look forward to, uh, to that coverage. And yeah, this has been like the Terminator. I mean... What more can be said? Oh, is there a perpetual? No, there's no perpetual. The king, it's a classic <laughs> pattern where the king runs over to e1. Yes, king runs to safety. There are ladder mates on both sides, but I beat you first. Bishop e7, discovered check on f6, and there it is. And white res and black uh, resigns. Yeah, between Min's ladder mate and Magnus's ladder mate, the ladder of the ladder mates yes. prevails. The ladder ladder mate. And the form, former ladder mate. <laughs> and Min, yeah, knight, knight h5, this is this is the good stuff right here. Knight h5 is the, the this is the edgy London. <laughs> and uh, the, 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 ba Ooh. back to our terms, we should not look up on Urban Dictionary. Do, yeah, no, don't worry. I've, I've <laughs> <laughs> not even <laughs> the tab. We, we have blacklisted that website in our house. Uh, this is like almost lost by force, like ninety five queen h five stuff. But Magnus defending it obviously quite nicely. And Ugh. but this is again. I mean, uh, Danny, what was the score last year? Magnus, Fabi didn't Fabi score two and a half? Yeah, it was. Well, I, I also Fabi got blown out by 
Icaro, I think. Fabius had a, a hard time in, in the SEC in general. Um, but yeah, Magnus, it was something like 21 and a half, two and a half, something of that nature, yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> what, what can you possibly do? I mean, what can you yeah. possibly do? That's Min insane. is worse again in, in London. I mean, Magnus is sacked upon. No, he hasn't. I thought he was, he did, but suddenly a material has once again equalized. Bishop c3. Yeah. I mean, just king b8 even. You don't have to do anything here with black. Just f5, yeah. No, Mag, you asked, you know, is it more that Min was in bad form, Magnus is in good form? Um, definitely both, but the more this match continues, the more impressed I am with the form that Magnus has displayed. In the CCT, it was a little bit back and forth. He was unstable. This match has been peak Magnus, really peak Magnus. Right. We do have to remember the CCT is, is, is rapid, ultimately. You have three times as much time. Or is it 10 minute, not 15? 10 minute, yeah. 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 But again, all the, the, the only thing Magnus needs to, to, to motivate him to absolutely dominate is not winning something. He doesn't win something. He, he shows up next time and goes, oh, yeah. Now, granted, he was a big favorite today. Right, so he he, yeah. he he did his job, but the way he's doing it is 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 quite impressive. It really is. His, yeah, his match against Arjun will be interesting. Arjun will have to step it up because yesterday Arjun had a tough tough road to yeah. tough uh, ladder to climb against Young Shustab. Dude, both players were struggling to find their footing. There were lots of blunders. You know, it was a it was a street brawl, and Arjun is watching this. Hopefully, what's up, Arjun? Knowing that he needs to. He needs to turn the page, and he needs to be his best self, and a much better self than he was against Duda. That's for sure, if he wants any chance. Certainly, there were some tactics there, some some cross pins and everything. But now Magnus is going to start collecting pawns. It's probably dynamically balanced because Min has these pass pawns, and Magnus can't relax just yet. And you, it's very easy to relax in a position like this. And in a match like this, when you know, I mean, with yeah. three minutes left, mathematically speaking, fourteen points in three minutes—that's more than realistic. Levy. I mean. You think about it, one game for five seconds. And this is likely a draw. Oh, he won on time, no, min, min flag. flag. No, but already in the final position, White's losing because the Black King is is a rounding up the pawn. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I, I think historically, I don't remember their online rapid scores, Magnus and uh, Arjun. Like, I think it's relatively, it's close. Obviously, it's in Magnus's favor. But I think in the online stuff, uh, and Magnus again going to the edge of the board, just like in the last game, hilarious. Uh, I think Magnus has a has a big lead in their online battles. Yeah, that's a safe safe statement to make with the most of his opponents. This is probably not going to be the last game. I think we're going to get two more games in. But no, just uh, just yeah, one, this, probably. Ticker, just one. Okay, yeah, yeah, with the increment, I agree. But. Uh, yeah, it could already spin out of control for Arjun very quickly. I mean, if he's down three, four games from the five plus one, it's basically hopeless. So he needs to use that that segment to keep it close. But like, again, how? What? How, how do you keep it close? Again, what do you tell your guy who you're coaching? What do you do against Magnus? Where are you keeping it close? How are you taking your chances? Well, the thing is, I think that I don't know what the conditions are for beating him, but I know what they are for losing. Um, and the, the easiest way to get blown out is not to exploit the, the very few tactical chances he gives you. Now, even Magnus in his best form, he will give you a few. I mean, Queen takes B7. He will give you a few chances, a few blunders. If you don't exploit those, then you've got no chance in the match. That's sort of my theory. That's step one. Um, and if you're in bad form, you know, you're not going to you're not going to be able to see those moments. Um, Min struggled tactically today. He had a few chances but it just wasn't there for him. He's going to lose another one. And knight e5. I was just about to say, we've got uh, this will run the clock out, but knight e5 is just winning material. If knight takes, there was pawn takes. The knight was hanging, the bishop was hanging. This is likely the last game of the match, and it is an absolute demolition job. Magnus Carlsen has not lost a game today mm -hmm. organically. I think he's going to play some devious stuff here. Oh, he just plays normal move. Okay. C fair, I thought. And yeah, beating Minlay by this margin is unbelievable. We have to remember, two points went to Minlay via disconnections. 
And that's what makes this even crazier. Even if those were reduced to draws, it's 20 and a half to two and a half. It's just insane. It's nuts. I'm running out of adjectives. Well, the good news for you is you have a match after this, which is a which is a pick'em. I think I don't know who's even the favorite there, but it's who is the favorite in that match? No one's your back, maybe by like fifty five percent. I have no, have no clue actually. Yeah, I think Noterbeck is the more consistent player to some degree, but also that doesn't mean, I mean, if Jan has a good day, that means he can blow out one of these guys. Yeah, Min is just, he just wants this thing to end and it's painful. You you, you feel for him. It's like, yeah, you're playing Magnus. It's a great chance, but all of that is, is just, uh, you know, all of those are just words. When you're sitting there and you're losing game after game, um, that's a very painful feeling no matter who you are. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be a close one. I, I really find it hard to imagine that it'll be a blowout in uh, Nepo Noterbeck. Yeah, just, I mean, what to say. And and, and uh, Rook C5, Rook G5 is still on the way. And maybe Magnus even plays Rook C5 here. <laughs> I don't think it works. Yeah, he doesn't do that. But <clears throat> by the way, there is something to be oh. said. What happened? Rook C2 mm -hmm. or something? Knight takes it, blunders the rook on D1. That's going to be the final game. Go ahead, Levy. No, I was going to say you don't want to lose the final game of a match ever, even if you're up this much. And, uh, well, Min will probably lose the final game of the match, but he uh, he's had a rough day today. What can you say? I mean, it's, yeah, it's uh, amazing. Five and a half, one and a half looks, uh, you know, looks close. Look at those totals. Seven, one, seven, one. That's going to become eight, one in the bullet. And it feels like the last time Magnus lost a game in this match was like last year. And he didn't even lose. He didn't lose a single game. He straight up didn't lose yeah, I mean, a game. One of, the, one of the disconnections he was lost, I think, in the final position. 